Salutations to all my Utopians Global here on behalf of Global Utopian Sports. Wanted to talk about this Dallas Mavericks Jalen Brunson dynamic. Um, I keep hearing uh, his name being brought up uh, due to Kyrie Irving's contract situation. And I already talked a little bit about it in my last interview about the leverage between who has more leverage, Kyrie or Dallas. Um, however, I want to you know reiterate this discussion a little bit by um, bringing up the guy who has them in this position in the first place, Jalen Brunson. Um, first and foremost, uh, Jalen played for the Mavericks uh, two years ago, two seasons ago. Um, he was drafted in the first round by the Mavericks. Uh, I don't know if they ever thought he would uh, become what he is today, but they definitely thought something of him if they had drafted him in the first round. Uh, you know, with the history of Luka and how difficult it was, um, I don't know, I, I like everyone else or a vast majority of people may have thought maybe he's able to do this because he's next to Luka even though he has a very decorated collegiate career as well uh, and with his size and everything they may have underestimated but this notion that Dallas lost Luke, uh, Jalen Brunson I just I can't get with that narrative you know Jalen first and foremost if, uh, is, is by nature already a guy who plays with a chip on his shoulder don't get me wrong, temperament, he's up there with the Tim Duncans, the Steph Currys, one of the coolest, most uh, easy to get along looking players I, uh, I've ever seen out there. You know what I mean? He just, he seems like a, just a really easy going guy. But I know deep down inside, there's a lot of fire and heart, especially if, when you're uh, coming from a program like Villanova, where they, they want, you know, construction hat wearing, gritty, tough, physical players. And uh, he definitely fits that mold and carries that tradition. And, um, you know, for him, for him, uh, you know, he's a silent guy, but you can tell he's a very proud player just by the way he scores, the way he plays the game. Uh, how a player plays the game tells you a lot about their personality and how they do things off the court is how they do things on the court. And you can tell, you know, being a smaller guy, he, you can definitely know he, you got to have a big heart to want to play basketball, especially on a pro level, let alone be an alpha one. And when New York became available and they had the cap space, um, you know, this guy is like, look, I'm, I'm doing my thing in the playoffs. And, and he was in the Western Conference Finals. Uh, you know, Luka would go down and he would just go. He wouldn't skip a beat uh, whenever Luka was on the bench. You could see all the signs were there. And maybe some thought because Luca was drawing double teams or, you know, for whatever reason, they may have thought it was just, you know, a fluke or something. But he was very much serious. And so he goes, here's the Knicks with this abundant cap. Father was formerly a point guard on the Knicks for many years. Though he didn't play a significant role in minutes wise, he was on that bench. And if you grow up watching your father play pro basketball, already a, you, we all, for those who have had a male figure in their life growing up, you're going to look at them as a superhero. And then to think that he's in the NBA, and then knowing his father had a great relationship with the ownership, James Dolan, and now here you have a chance to be the starting point guard, play the same position he played in a full circle moment, make a great living financially, making north of $100 million. You think he's going to pass that opportunity up? Dallas, the fact is, Dallas never lost Jalen Brunson. The New York Knicks had him from the beginning, and they hired his dad, for goodness sakes. And... You know, I just wish that Mark Cuban, you know, he's such a, a influential figure in the, in the NBA uh, and such a large part of its history. It's kind of shocking and appealing that he would sit there and make insinuations or even take it up with the league, a tampering charge, when the truth is, it's like it was just meaningless. And for the league to, you know, it just goes to show you how much influence he has for them to be like, or how much respect he has from the league. Where they're like, all right, just give up a, a second round, one of your many second round draft picks and call it a day. Um, but it's just like the Mavericks didn't lose him. He was never in the idea set to be like, I'm going to be Robin to Batman when he can come to Gotham City and be Batman. OK, it's not it's not this narrative needs to stop. And them now thinking and them allowing it to seep into their franchise, now forcing them to go out and pay vastly overpay for someone like Kyrie double the money. It's, it's absurd. They should have got in front of it a lot earlier. And, and nipped it in the butt and just said, look, he wanted to go, you know, it was more of a, a family lineage thing and it was leaving Dallas, you know, and, and, you know, it's really not Dallas' fault. Look how many people are leaving Luca's side, you know, and or don't want to be there. Dennis Smith Jr. was one thing. Okay, well, he was mad he lost his job uh, as primary ball handler in Carlisle. Okay, whatever you want to say. But then Porzingis, 
And then Tim Hardaway's dad is making comments, Tim Hardaway Sr., who's also a legend in his own way, Chi Town legend. It, it starts to, and now you're just in this mad scramble every season, and then Kyrie gets there, and they, they end up falling way out of playoff contention. You know, you didn't have to, I just don't think they handled it well. But um, give me your thoughts, uh, Utopians. What are your thoughts on this whole uh, Jalen Brunson, Dallas Mavericks stream? Looking forward to your commentary. Always welcome, always open to a healthy debate. In the meantime, between time, all the best. Stay tuned.